guys. <laughs> uh, I'm going to attempt to make this video that I have been wanting to make for a while, ever since, um, God, I think it dates way back to when Marmalade had her kittens, and then again, I thought about it after Lily had her kittens, and I just haven't really seemed to find, have found the time or the I don't know, the urge to sit here and get dressed and like want to make a video, but I've had so many like repetitive questions that I thought it would be a good time to kind of write down the common questions that I've gotten from people and make them in one video. So this is just a quick-ish, hopefully, video on kittens, cats, and cat care, um, different points, different things people wonder about mostly about pregnancy okay so first of all I get asked a lot how to tell if your cat is pregnant if you have let your cat outside and she's in heat most likely she's pregnant the first sign is if their nipples are pink and swollen um, it takes a while before they start to show by the time a cat starts showing they're probably around two weeks to a month from giving birth. So basically once they show, they're pretty close. Once you can feel the babies kicking, almost as a rule, they're gonna give birth two weeks later. So um, the first thing you look for, monitor the nipples. Once the nipples start turning pink, then you look for their bellies to start growing, and then you look for them to start losing the hair around their nipples, and then you start looking for feeling the babies moving. That way you can kind of estimate about how long it'll be. Now, um, how to feel the babies, you have to be very gentle. Hopefully your cat trusts you enough that you can rub her tummy. If you can rub her tummy, the best thing to do is just have her lay on you. Don't force her, don't grab her, don't make her stay still so that you can touch her stomach. Wait until she's asleep or laying calmly or laying on your lap, which is even better. Gently place your hand like this underneath her. Let her lay you know, because you can see the bulges on the sides of her tummy. By the time you can see those bulges, you should be able to feel the babies. You should be able to see them through her skin or her fur if she's got short hair, or you'll see the fur rippling if she's got long hair. But um, if you place your hand like this and she nests her tummy into your hand, you just lay like this, leave your hand open and loose, and you can feel the little kicks. Otherwise, place your hand very gently on top of her. Don't squeeze. Don't push down. Don't try to get in there and feel to see how many babies she might have. If you want to know that, go to a vet. They can scan, do an ultrasound or feel, and they can tell you what they think. It's all right to guess, but do not try to probe in there and figure out how many babies she might have. If you're smart or if you're very, very good, not, not smart, if you're very, very good, sometimes you can tell just by looking, you can kind of estimate how many might be on each side because, um, there's like two channels where the babies are. They're lined up like this and the babies will come like this. So sometimes you can kind of judge, but again, without uh, an ultrasound, it's not a hundred percent. It's just a fun little game you can play with yourself to guess how many babies they might have. Now, how to tell if they're in labor. Cats are different. They, just like humans, they show different signs when they go into labor. Marmalade, she let me know 100%. She, uh, she didn't pay any attention to the nesting boxes that I had placed around the house. That is one thing both cats have had in common. They don't care about the nesting boxes. They know what they want. They know where they want to be. They know what they want to do. It's good to still have them. A nesting box is just a box or a crate or a drawer or a cabinet where you have blankets. It's dark. It's out of the way. It's private. It's somewhere that they can give birth and feel safe and raise their babies and feel safe away from, you know, the traffic of the home or, or a lot of noise and, and commotion. So you want to have somewhere just quiet and safe and secure. Um, the more safe and secure it is, the less chance she will pick up the babies and keep trying to move them, finding somewhere that she feels safe and secure. So um, your cat might not use them. They might use them, but it's always a good idea to have them. And you have more than one. Don't just have one box and expect them to use it. You have them set up usually in places they like to go or places that they kind of sniff around a lot. Um, Marmalade didn't pay any attention. Uh, she woke me up. It was early in the morning and she came to me and she was crying and screaming and she kept leading me. She was guiding me. It was my first experience with a cat doing that to me. So I was like, what's the matter? What do you want? What's the matter? Um, 
and I just got up and I followed her and she'd stop and turn around and look at me and meow and cry, walk off a little bit, turn, make sure I was following her. And then she went straight into the box. She, she knew she wanted the box at that point. She went under the table. The reason I put it under the dining room table is because that's where she would always sleep. She loved being under the dining room table. So I put the box there. I had, um, a couple of other spots that she, she didn't care. She wanted to go in a place that was familiar for her. So she went to that part under the table and she gave birth there. Um, Lily, she was a cat that we took in and, um, her owner had nowhere to go. And when she found a place to go, they said, absolutely no cat. She had nowhere. Her friends told her, just throw the cat on the side of the road or something. We said, nope, we will take her. So we took her in and, um, she gave birth two weeks later. She, I had nesting places set up all over. I had one over here, one over here in the bathroom. I had everywhere. She didn't want any of those places. There was no signs of labor. Um, a lot of times about 24 to 48 hours before they go into labor, they're supposed to stop eating and drinking. They kind of lose their appetite. They pace around. Sometimes you can see their water break. You can see like blood, um, back in their hoo-hoo, you know, the hoo-ha. <laughs> uh, but usually there's, there's pretty obvious signs that they're going into labor. You might think, I wonder if they're going to labor, but usually when it happens, you're like, how could I have ever wondered because it's so obvious, you know, right away that they are going into labor. Um, Lily didn't have any of those signs. She ate and drank. She had the same kind of appetite. She didn't pace. She, she didn't do anything. She was always really talkative. So she never stopped talking. And I went to sleep and this was early in the morning. Again, I woke up, she had burrowed herself next to me under the blankets and she had been cuddly anyway, because you know, when cats are pregnant, they're usually very snuggly. They're very, very affectionate. And so she, I thought she was just being snuggly. And then I heard her scream and I was like, are you okay? Are you, are you giving birth? And I looked and she had had a kitten next to me. So I had no time to prepare. I definitely wasn't going to move her. Once they're in the birthing process, you should not pick them up and not move them. The babies are on their way down. And if you grab the cat, stress her out, you could really, really screw things up. So it is best just to leave them. Even if they are in bed next to you, you can shampoo the bed. You can get a new bed. You can hire someone to clean it. It's not worth the kitten's life or the cat's stress to pick them up and move them. So I sat here. I got a pair of pajama pants to try to put under her. I tried because I, I couldn't get up because she was leaning against my body. And if I'd gone up, I would have moved everything. I didn't want to startle her. I didn't want to get have her think she needed to get up and move. So I just sat here and I let her give birth. Now, it's not just back to back to back. They don't just spit out the kittens one right after the other. Usually there's a pause. It gives the cat time to recover in between kittens. She will give birth to one. She will eat the, um, the placenta. She gives birth to those separately. First, it'll be the kitten. And then after that, she'll have the afterbirth and she will chew off the umbilical cord and eat the afterbirth. It's not the kitten she's eating. It's the afterbirth. So just don't freak out too much. Usually they will not need your help, but it's good to monitor. Sometimes they take a while to break the sack. Um, Lily, didn't break the sack of the second or the third one and the kitten was there gasping and I gently just pinched the sack and let it open. The kitten's face broke free and then she she started licking him and cleaning him and everything was fine. We didn't lose a single kitten in that litter, nor marmalades either. Um, the kitten birth usually happens pretty easily. They know what to do. They don't need you to step in, but always monitor and be sure. Um, if it's been quite a while between kittens, then you might want to, you might want to feel her stomach. You can, you can usually feel gently and know if the babies are still moving down or if she's empty. Um, you can tell sometimes by her demeanor if she's done, because if she's laying there and she's more relaxed and she goes to sleep and she's just feeding her babies, usually that's a good sign that she's done. But, uh, if you see something very startling or that doesn't look right, of course, follow your instincts and call your vet. But generally, the most you might have to do with a very inexperienced or tired mom might be just break the sacks. Um, and all you do is just gently do that over the face. Don't touch the kitten. Don't try to rip it. Don't do anything like that. You just gently snip it. The sack is paper thin and it'll split right away. It's mostly just solidified water and it'll just open. As long as that kitten can breathe, that's fine. If the kitten comes out and it's not breathing and the mom is not licking it, get a washcloth and just gently, gently try to wipe the, the mouth, the nose, 
um, push on the chest, you know, very, very, very gently. Um, one of my cats in New Zealand that we thought was a, a boy, actually, at the time, we were told a boy, and I don't know why we thought it was a boy the whole time. She got out, she got pregnant. We had no idea she was pregnant almost until the moment she gave birth. And um, first time mom, her and her sister actually both got out at the same time, both got pregnant. They had litters 10 days apart. Uh, one of them, the I don't think the kitten, they didn't break the, excuse me, Ugh. they didn't break the uh, sack and the kitten wasn't breathing. And I had to break the sack and wipe it down. And just, just the act of wiping it like the mom would lick it was enough to stimulate the kitten and he started breathing and, and both of those litters survived as well. So onward to after the birthing and everything's fine and the kittens are feeding and you've if they're in bed with you, you've picked them up and moved them. When is it okay to touch the kittens? A lot of people try to say that if you touch a kitten, the mom will reject it and the kitten will die. That is not true. It is not true at all. The mom will let you know if it is okay to touch her babies or not. If it is not okay, she will pick them up and she will move them or she might growl at you or hiss at you, but you will definitely know if it's okay or not. If this is your pet and she trusts you, more than likely you'll be able to handle the kittens. You're supposed to pick them up, weigh them, make sure that they are gaining weight like they're supposed to. You can sex them. Um, you shouldn't, of course, play with them or handle them too much. You, you don't handle them more than you should, ha you know, more than you need to while they're young. But you definitely can handle them if you have to because she will not reject them for that. Um, when they're little, of course, they're going to be most likely... Not 100% of the time, most likely they're going to be in a nest or somewhere dark and closed off and safe. For instance, we had, after I moved them from my bed, we put them under the sink because in the bathroom it's pretty quiet, it's dark, we, we left a light on for her. We closed one of the cabinet doors, left the other one open, had piles of blankets in there. But once the kittens hit about three weeks, their eyes were open, they started to move around a little more. Between three and four weeks is when they start to wander and explore. We didn't want them to fall out of the cupboard. So I then pick them up and I move them in here. I put them in another container. Um, I, it was just a plastic like storage container that I flipped on its side, put a blanket over it. So it was like, you know, well, this doesn't have sleeves, but it was like a curtain over the, you know, say this is a container and the curtain was like this. So the entryway was dark and hidden. They had blankets in there and they were where they could come out and explore or follow her around if they wanted to and not fall out or hurt themselves. So when they hit between three and a half, four weeks, or you see them starting to move around and explore, it is then safe to move them into a bigger or more populated area. If a kitten hits eight weeks old without being touched or having human contact, um, that's where they're considered feral. And it'll be very, very hard at that point to start getting them used to human contact. It is best if you have a litter of kittens, once their eyes are open and they spend a little bit more time exploring, getting to know each other, that you handle them as much as possible. Pat them, let them smell you, touch their paws so that they're used to having their paws touched so you can cut their claws, um, touch their faces, touch their stomachs. You get them used to being handled. This is where they're learning. They learn how to cat. They follow what their mother does. However their mother reacts to humans is also how they will react to humans because they see how she is. So it's very, very important to interact with them and let them know that humans are good, humans are safe, get them used to what they're going to need to know for the rest of their lives. Um, how to sex a kitten. I have another video showing this. Sexing a kitten once you know what to look for is very, very, very easy. The Best times are to sex them when they're newborn or when they're a couple weeks old. In between, it gets a little harder, but essentially is the same. With a boy, there's a great space in between the butt and the genitals. Um, because what you're looking at is this is going to be the butt, the anus, and down here is going to be um, where the pee from. And around it, is going to be where the balls are going to be. So around here, there's going to be like two dimples, two areas where the balls will end up coming out. If there's a big space, you have a boy. With a girl, it's like an exclamation mark. It's it's the butt and it's the vaginal opening. So it's, it's essentially like this. So if the holes are very close together, it's a girl. If there's a space, it's a boy. 
That, it's very, very simple. Um, can you bathe a kitten? Some kittens catch fleas really easily from the mother or if they have access to where another cat has been. You cannot give them flea treatment or any kind of medicine like that. Under eight weeks old, they are too small. It will poison them. It will greatly, greatly hurt them. You can bathe them, but again, you should not bathe them unless you absolutely, absolutely have to. And even then, you should not put a kitten in water until they're at least four weeks old. It's best to get a washcloth, wash them down if you have to with that. If you have to put them in water, they can catch cold and they can die um, very, very easily at that age. So be sure that you dry them off completely. Um, it, it's just it's just very risky for a young kitten for you to get them wet because of how easily they can get sick and they can die. They are so fragile. So if at all possible, do not bathe them. Once they get older and bigger, you can you can do that, but you shouldn't do that for a little kitten unless, yeah, like I said, it, it is completely necessary. Okay, um, with the mom, sometimes mothers are not good mothers and um, they don't take care of their kittens like they should. Uh, you should always be aware that the kittens are growing, they're eating, especially if there's a runt, make sure the runt always has access to a nipple. Make sure they're eating, they're drinking, and they're defecating. Um, they start peeing and pooing on their own around four weeks. Uh, and then they follow her. They look at the mom and they know how to cover it up. They might not cover it at first. They might miss the litter box, but they'll generally get the idea sooner or later. Now, Lily, Lily was a really bad mom. I don't know if she was like this for her other litters because Lucifer was he's an amazing kitten. He, there's no problems with him at all. Um, it doesn't look like he's suffered whatsoever. And he was with her until I got him. However, with this litter, I don't know what it was. Maybe she's just over having kittens, but she, she was very negligent. She, uh, she would attack them. She didn't play with them. She didn't interact with them. And Cuppy Cake, the little fluffy one, I remember hearing her screaming and screaming and you could see her straining to go to the toilet and Lily didn't even look at her. Usually, you know, the mother cat is very in tune with her kittens. She'll hear a kitten crying and she'll go and see what's going on. Lily didn't bother to go look. Uh, if you spend enough time around the kittens, you'll know the difference between a hunger cry, a uh, crying for mommy, and a pain cry. If there's a pain cry, you need to check it right away. A, a little kitten can die within 24 hours if something goes wrong. This kitten hadn't gone poo and Lily had not been stimulating her. So I took, you do take a warm washcloth and you gently wipe the genitals, the, the butt and the where, the, where they pee from. And you always try to mimic what the mom cat would do by licking. And as you wipe the front, they'll start to pee all over. And as you wipe the back, poo will come out because they can't poo and pee on their own. And when I did that to her, a log came out that was half as big as her body. And I know that if we hadn't, if, if I hadn't taken notice or been around or been aware, hearing her cry and, and done that right away, I'd have do it a couple of times for her. She probably wouldn't be here right now. She would have died. There was a lot of poop in there and they have got to have helped to expel that. And sometimes the mom cats just, they just don't do what the mom cats need to do. And so as a, human parent, you have to be aware of what's going on with the babies at all times. Um, she, uh, she would also, I haven't told anybody about Lily and the kittens yet. So I'm just going to finish off with this a little bit. Uh, they play around the fan sometimes and they're, they're about four weeks old and they wouldn't even be looking at her. They'd just be playing and doing their own thing. Cause they're just learning to interact with the world around them. And she'd be walking by and then she'd go out of the way, out of her way, go over to them and just attack them. And, um, they got so scared. They were too scared to even walk by her. And, uh, she just hiss and growl and just attack. She was miserable. She was making them miserable. She wouldn't feed them. She wouldn't clean them. She didn't interact with them. She was just, she was being really, really, really negligent and they weren't getting anything from her. And so we had to send her off. We, we offered her back to the original owner, but she didn't want her back. And she couldn't stay around the kittens with what she was doing. They were so scared. They couldn't even, yeah, they couldn't even walk past her. One time she jumped on the bed. She looked up on the bed, saw a kitten up there, jumped up on the bed and just started hitting him. Like she's knocked them across the floor and she's not playing. She's acting like they're other cats. 
and the kittens and her were in our room completely isolated from the other cats. The other cats were not in here, not allowed around the kittens. And uh, it didn't matter. She just, she just did not like them. And I saw how scared they were. She'd walk by and they'd just curl into little balls with their tails tucked between their legs, getting ready for her to beat them up. And if she wasn't feeding them and she wasn't stimulating them and all she was doing was attacking them, then she needed to go. So she went off to a home as an only pet. And as soon as she went there, she thrived. They got her spayed. They, she, they sent me pictures of her in their daughter's bed. And she, they said that she cries and cries for the daughter. She follows her everywhere. She was more suited to be in an only pet household because she loves people, but she hates other animals. And after we got rid of them, or after we got rid of her, uh, we bought kitten replacement milk and I fed that to the kittens and wet food. It's always good when they do start eating food to give them wet food because they'll eat the dry food, which is good for their, their growing teeth, but wet food will help keep everything moist so that they can go to the toilet and not get constipated. Because again, getting backed up is a death sentence for a young kitten. So kitten replacement milk mixed with warm water and they are big and they are healthy and they, they are happy kittens. Um, so everything worked out great in the end. You have to use your own judgment and watch and see what's going on and do what is best for those babies because those babies rely on you if their mother fails them. Uh, last thing on here is when to rehome them. And then I'll give you guys a little bonus tip, I guess, but most people should probably know this other one, but when to rehome them. Now, a lot of people online rehome kittens at five, six, and seven weeks old. That makes me so angry. Kittens should not be rehomed ideally at 12 weeks. 12 weeks is when you should rehome them. My kittens are ready to be rehomed now. They're about, I think they're about 12, 12 weeks old, maybe. What is this? May, February, March, April, May. Yeah. They're, they're around 12 weeks old now. I think they just hit 12 weeks today, actually. The 12 weeks old today. <laughs> um, so now they're ready to be rehomed. But, uh, Eight weeks is minimum, 12 weeks is ideal because even after they're done eating from their mom, they still need to learn from her. They learn how to cat from her. They have their siblings. They learn social interaction. They learn everything else they need to learn from their mom during those extra few weeks, even if they're not getting sustenance from her. Um, when they play with other cats and the other cats cry, they learn how not to bite too hard, how not to play too rough, you know, all those little things that a human being can't teach them. I mean, I guess we could, but it's best for cats to teach other cats. They need to learn that from each other and from their mother. And they can't learn this stuff if you take them away too early. The kittens that go around sucking on fabric, sucking on other kittens, sucking on humans, that's because they were taken from their mother too soon. And they they revert to their kittenhood. You know, they, they look for comfort by kneading and sucking on fabric or cloth or anything that might remind them of their mom. These cats actually, they don't do that. They don't nuzzle or suck on anything. For a while, they tried that on Lucifer because not only is he their half brother, but he looks just like their mom. They love him to death. They follow him everywhere. They're like, he, he might as well be their mom or their dad or, or whatever, but he is their brother. They don't suck on him anymore, but they, cuddle up to him. They lay with him. They hug him. He hugs them. They clean each other. So they, they all get along really, really great. But that nuzzling and sucking is really sad to see because it just means that somebody was too impatient and they separated that baby way too soon. I think that's about all the information I can give you guys on kittens, pregnancy, labor, little helpful tips here and there. Um, the last thing is cutting their claws. That's this little bonus, cutting their claws. Um, do not ever declaw your cat. What people, some people are just now learning about is that when people declaw their cats, they're not just pulling the claws out or cutting the claws. To declaw a cat, they're removing this whole part of the cat's finger. They remove the entire first knuckle of the hand so the claw cannot grow back. This affects their balance. It affects their attitude. It, it causes them, it's like, it gives them like arthritis. It changes the way that they walk. Um, the way they they focus their weight on their paws and they can't scratch their itches anymore. They can't do anything at all anymore. And if they feel threatened, they've got no way to protect themselves. So they can turn really angry and really, you know, like on guard all the time, really kind of aggressive because you've just taken away 
their only means of, you know, defending themselves if they felt threatened by something. Um, a lot of people think that they just maybe pull the nail out or do something, but they don't. They cut the entire knuckle off and it's really gruesome and it's really, really cruel. What I do is I always cut the cat's claws. I trim the claws and I do every few weeks. And if you do it often enough, the cats get used to it and it's not really a big deal. And it saves your skin, it saves your furniture, it saves everything and they get to keep their claws. Even the little, little babies who have the sharpest claws, you can cut their claws. All you need to do with the babies, do it when they're asleep. When they're asleep, you can touch their paws, you gently squeeze in between here, the claw will pop out and where the claw is, this part is pink and then the claw will be here and when you cut it, it'll split a little bit of the way up. So you cut it away from, a little bit away from where you want it to end up, if that makes sense. Say if I wanted to cut this part off, I would only cut this because it would split up and get rid of this part, if that makes any sense. If you cut it too deep, that's blood vessels and, and you will end up cutting it and you'll make them bleed and they will feel that and it will hurt. So if you're ever not too sure, if you're just getting started, then just that very fine tip at the end, just that tiny, tiny tip, I would just cut that off, blunt that. As I get older and you get more confident, you'll know where to stop and how far to cut. And you cut their front, their back, and their little thumbs. Um, once you do that, it's not really a big deal. These little babies, I cut them when they're asleep because they're really, really hyper. And uh, that's all good. It, it's quite funny though because they get used to being able to dig their claws in and climb on the furniture. And without their claws, they slide all the way down. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, Lucifer, he's used to it now because I've been cutting his claws since I got him. So I just flip him over. I hug him against my, my body. And um, his back is right here. His front is out. And I just pick up his paws and I just snip, 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 snip. And it's over. I can cut their claws in a couple seconds. And uh, it's great. So um, that's why it's very important when you get a cat to play with their paws, stroke their paws, touch them, get them used to it. And that way, when it comes time to cut their claws, you don't have to go to a vet. You can do it yourself. And I think that's about it. Um, hopefully this has helped you guys and answer some of the questions that I get quite a bit about how do you know your cat's pregnant? What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? How do you know? What What is there to look for? Um, I do have the other videos on my channel showing it, uh, showing the two different cats giving birth and the differences between them and how quickly their litters came out. One from a first time mother and one from a mother that it was on her third litter. I will link those in the description below. And otherwise, if there's anything else you want to know that I haven't answered here, let me know. And if there's enough stuff, I'll make a part two, but I think I've covered everything. So I hope that helped. I will see you guys later. Love kittens and <laughs> take care.